Hello, everybody, and welcome to game three in this best of five series for the DreamHack Invitational Tournament taking place in Verona, Spain. And we have now once again spawning as the Blue Terran, Maus Thorzing, a Swedish pro, a Swedish player, a Swedish powerhouse. He has been rocking it in this tournament and he is rocking it in this match. He was able to take a game off of his opponent. Dong Rangu spawning here as the Red Zerg, a South Korean Code S, awesome pro player, one of the best players on the Korean ladder, probably making him one of the best players in the game. And they're going to be facing off for this game three on GSL Terminus. You might wonder what is the difference between the ladder version of Term Terminus and the GSL version. It is this right here, neutral supply depot. No one owns it, no one gets supply, but it is going to be very critical in that it does it disallows Zerg players from getting boxed into their single one base by a Protoss or a Terran opponent. A very dominant strategy for a while was for Protoss players to put down pylons and cannons or for Terran players to put SC or, uh, supply depots and bunkers down here, locking a Zerg player in, forcing them to get either Roaches or Banelings and making it just extremely difficult. And I think that the uh, good folks over at the Global Starcraft League realized that that did not discourage good, that, did, that discouraged good play. It encouraged bad play, made for very unexciting games fairly unfair games. They thought it was a little bit overpowered. So I agree with them making these custom maps and we're going to see a good game out of this considering the fact that Terminus is huge. It is a not as big as the last map Term, uh, Taldream Alter LE but it is still pretty large. It has a very easy to take natural, a very easy to take half third base. This right here only has one geyser and five mineral patches but it is nothing to turn your nose down at. Oftentimes you will see Zerg players take their first base right away and then almost very almost immediately around the six or seven minute mark take their third base and it is not too uncommon to see Terran and Protoss players do that as well. Thorzine for his part going for the same standard opening he's been going for. He's not setting himself up on this uh, bottom section of his ramp. He's walling off right here with one barracks. He's probably going to be getting his um, yep, orbital command coming right out and I can expect to see some gas very soon. He is not known for his early game aggression. He is known for his very very defensive play. He is known for uh, getting setting up his macro very well going with strong drops forcing people's attention from one side of the map to the other and eventually pushing up with siege tanks, with marines, with vikings, with marauders with everything in the Terran army and just choking out their opponents, starving them out of minerals, taking wave after wave of Zerg units, taking wave after wave of Protoss or Terran units, and just crushing them down. And we're going to see how that does against uh, Dong Rangu's very macro, professional, strong oriented style of play. He is just a Zerg macro powerhouse. He is also known for his Terran versus Terran. He feels that it is his strongest matchup. He thinks that he has it beat. He thinks he knows what he's doing. And considering the fact that he was able to take game one off of Thorazine and just barely lose in game two. I would say he definitely knows what he's doing. And both of these players are just setting themselves up. We have Thorazine actually setting up a second command center. He is going for that very, very macro style. He wants to stay on the same number of bases as a Zerg player or more. He wants to get those mules up and running. He wants to get more SCVs. And we have, interestingly, a Roach Warren coming down for Dong Rangu. He's deciding not to go right into the lair. In fact, he's even skipped Zergling speed for the moment. He's spending all of his gas on Roaches, and I can't help but think that we're going to see some kind of early Roach aggression, something that he can do to take advantage of the fact that he realizes Thorzine is interested in setting up his macro game. He is interested in going into siege tanks, but siege tanks come out a little bit too soon, and not too many Terran players make Marauders versus Zerg. It is just not done in this stage of the metagame. People realizes, realize that the favored strategy for Zerg players is Mutilus, Baneling, Zergling, and perhaps Dongrengu is playing towards that um, style of, uh, that type of attitude. He is thinking that, okay, Thorzine has seen me play with Mutilus all of these past two games. He has seen me play with Zerglings these past two games. I'm going to throw him for a loop. I'm going to throw some roaches at him and see what he does. Another possibility is the fact that Thorazine has been using Hellions to great effect. He practically won the game in the last match with Hellions, with his drop of Hellions and Marines, doing tons of damage to Don Rangu's economy line. And I think that Don Rangu does not want that to happen ever again. So he's going to get some roaches. And here they are. They are moving out. We have six roaches moving out and no more on the way. we got Zergling Speed starting up. And we're going to probably see him move into a lair very soon in order to get those moves, in order to get air control, in order to start taking his... Yep, he's going to be taking his third now. 
does not need the lair for that, but it definitely helps in order to have those higher tech units in order to defend what he needs to defend. And now these roaches have been revealed for Maus Thorazine. He knows what's coming. He is moving these Marines back, and we're going to have a bit of an engagement here as these Marines and roaches are going to be running into each other. And look at that, Thorazine buying more time, following these Marines back as he builds C another siege tank coming down. We've got a bunker coming in. Um, and a couple of Marines getting uh, acided away, just getting melted. What a way to go. These roaches are not... They feel no remorse. They are going to move in bug style and do some damage. And it looks like if they are um, able to, they might be able to force their way into the base, waiting for these Marines to come in here. And these Marines are still hanging out in the back. And he realizes that he cannot get in with all these roaches here. Going for this supply depot. SCV's coming off over here, trying to do some repairing. Is it going to be in time? One SCV gets sniped down. And now we got a siege tank there doing tons of damage. Bunker getting loaded up with two Marines doing a lot of damage to those roaches, but they have so much armor, and now the, siege, the roaches are in the base. Siege tank taking out another roach, finally getting destroyed. Hellions are attacking, but Hellions do almost no damage to roaches. And we have roaches moving in to the mineral line, able to snipe down as many SCVs as they can. Marines are coming in from behind, and Dong Ragu is getting a huge scout on Thorstein's base before these roaches are finally taken down by the Marines. He was able to see the factories. He was able to see the tech labs. He was able to see the starport. I'm not sure if he saw this tech lab going up. Let's find out. He did not see the tech lab going up for the starport. So we're going to see probably Banshees coming in for Thorazine. But Dongregu does not care. He's getting his hatchery. He is building more drones. He is getting his economy going. And he is now outproducing him by the tune of 47 to 32 workers. But Thorzine knows that he needs to do a little bit of damage. He is not interested in just getting slapped around by those roaches. He is not interested in just taking it on the chin and walking away. He does not want to turn the other cheek. He wants to turn the other Hellion. He wants to turn the other Marine. He wants to turn the other Gauze Rifle. Come in here, do some damage, say, hey, Zerglings, I hate you. This is not how it's going to go down. Let's have some fun. Let's get roasted. And these Hellions are even hanging out on the creep. They're like, hey, I don't care. Come and get me. And I think that these, Zer these Hellions are being used as a baiting attack. They are forcing the Zerglings to hang out down here while Thorzine drops in the upper Upper regions of Dongregu's base, but Dongregu is aware of this. He knows what's happening. He sees it with the peeking over of the creep. We've got roaches coming in. We've got queens coming in. Blue Flame Hellions just finishing. Roasting away all of those Zerglings, but Blue Flame's not doing too much damage against those roaches. Wasting a ton of shots on those roaches. Queens coming in, doing a ton of damage to these Marines, to these Hellions, but it might not be enough. We've got more Zerglings coming in. 26 Zerglings being produced. This queen goes down. This roach is going to get roasted down, and I'm not sure what's going to happen. All of these drones are in danger from these Blue Flame Hellions. They are running out, getting, oh no, setting up in a line. And there are going to be tons of drones getting roasted. So many drones getting taken out, evening it up 9 to 10. And this is bad news for Don Rangu. Luckily, he was able to get his drones out of there, transferred to his secondary base. And these Hellions and Marines are still doing tons of damage, sniping down roaches, sniping down queens, going after overworlds, getting lifted up. Look at that. Getting lifted up to avoid that one, that low hit point Hellion from getting crushed by the Zerglings that were rushing in. Great control from Thorzine. The APM from both of these players very high. Don Ragu is just spamming his keyboard. I'm not going to say he's spamming. He is. Every one of those attacks is definitely worthwhile. Every one of those key presses are doing something for him. And now we have Cloak Banshees coming in. Overseer morphing out and more drop play. Picking up those wounded Marines, picking up those wounded Hellions, and now the Overseer is finally coming out, revealing that Banshee. And we have more attacks coming down, attacking this Queen. I'm not sure if it's going to be killed, but this Banshee went down because of the Queens and the Overlords. This one Queen getting taken down. Zerglings coming in, finally surrounding another Queen taken down. And that was huge. What an amazing drop by Thorzing, doing tons of damage, and finally getting cleaned up by these Mutilists, by these Roaches, by these Zerglings. But a ton of damage was done, a lot of lost mining time, considering that this base was oversaturated for about a minute but we got another banshee still attacking these drones amazing multitasking from thorzine doing tons of damage forcing this overseer to come down finally chasing away this banshee and in the meantime we had thorzine using that aggression like any good player to expand out whenever you send out an attack do not wait until that attack is over to expand you want to be ex expanding as that attack goes out you want to be doing as much economic damage and you want to be doing as much economic advancement as you possibly can. We're going to get this gas up and running to get those higher techs units coming down soon. And we have Dong Ringu sending out Zergling, going for these rocks. He wants to get a second path into this base of Mouse Thorzine. And this is going to be interesting, breaking down these rocks. It's going to take a while with Zerglings, but I don't think that Thorzine is aware of it. No, he has no idea. He can't see the rocks. He can't see the Zerglings. He can't hear the Zerglings. And we have more roaches coming over. Creep is being spread very well. 
by Dong Regu, and we're going to see what Thorazine plans to do. He's moving into Siege Tank. He's got a Siege. He's got his uh, Steam Pack coming down with an armory. He has spotted those Mutilus. He wants to get some Thors coming out to deal with those. Those Javelin missiles are just murder for Mutilus, and now he has spotted these rocks being taken down, but there is very little that he can do about it. He has a couple of Siege Tanks, a couple of Marines, and he spotted those Mutilus running in. He needs the, the Marines in a defensive posture to deal with these Mutilus. But if he sent his siege tanks over there alone, they would get sniped down by the Mutas. And now we have uh, even some supply depots out of position, going to get taken down by the Mutas. And actually severely supply locking Mao's Thorzine. He is not going to be able to produce any more units right now when he desperately needs them. And you see here, Dong Rangu is taking my advice. Attack and expand, attack and expand. He is setting up his fourth hatchery here. He's going to saturate that soon. And now we have Zerglings and Roaches moving in. Zerglings getting a huge hit from those siege tanks. All of those Zerglings were annihilated. The Roach is also getting annihilated, doing a little bit of damage to that turret, but not much. Those four siege tanks in a perfect position to do just a ton of damage to, the, to that little bit of an attack. But now we have Mutalus coming in on the other side, realizing that most of Thorazine's uh, Marines are on the south side of his base and taking advantage of that by coming in and killing a few more. And Thorazine is no longer supply lock. Dong Rangu is producing uh, his units like a champ. He is setting up his third, his fourth. Actually, this is going to be his uh, fifth or his sixth and seventh guess. Sorry about that. And this is going to be uh, very nice. He wants to get as many mutas as he can, as he can. Moving with that strong mutalist play that has been serving him so well in the past two games. Now he's moving in, attacking on the south side. Realizing the last time he saw those marines, they are on the north side of the base and forcing so many mules and SCVs to run away. Tons of mules going down, tons of SCVs going down. More mules getting killed, look at that. That was a fresh call down of mules and they just got annihilated by all the mutalists. Great play by Dong Rangu, keeping him back in the game. He is doing a great amount of damage. He has killed 20 workers to Thorzine's 12, and he is doing great on the economy game. Got his fourth base up and running, no problem. And look at that income, almost doubling the gas income from Thorzine. This is enormous. Thorzine has got to get going. He is on the back foot. The defensive play style is not serving him against this macro machine of Dong Rangu. He needs to get up and out. He needs to go and be aggressive. He needs to at least whittle down the forces of him because as soon as Dong Rangu hits his maxed out Zerg, Zerg, Zerg 200, 200 army, he's going to want to get in there. He's going to be throwing wave after wave of units at Thorzine. But hold the phone. We have more mutilists coming in, and Thorzine is looking to take his expansion, sending a couple of um, Marines over, and where is that Thor? It has got to get into position, but no. Thorzine smartly realizing that if he moves that Thor, Dong Regu is just going to run to the side of his base that the Thor is not. we got a second one on the field, shooting away these Mutalists, and I'm not sure what's going to happen here. It looks like I would say that Dong Regu is in a strong position, taking it to the next level, moving into the hive tech, getting his baneling nest down, getting his um, pathogen glands, and even his upgrades going for his Zerg army. And now we have a big engagement coming in. Lots of Zerglings rushing into the siege tank as they are sieging up. Thor is going to town and more siege, siege attacks, taking out all those Zerglings. And now the Mulus sniping down that Thor. Great little control, but losing a ton of Mulus in the process. And now we have these Marines and siege tank trying to take this center section here in order to cover this base, which is currently morphing into a planetary fortress, trying to set up a strong position, a strong siege line, a strong map presence. But I am really concerned because of the fact that this base down here, sure it has three missile turrets, four missile turrets, but that is not too much considering the amount of mutilists that have been laid down by Dong Rangu so far. But Dong Rangu is actually going to be switching it up. He has decided to stop producing mutilists. He is going for an ultralist cavern. And where is that morphing in? It is morphing in down here. Ultralist falling a little bit out of favor for Zerg players lately, but against this kind of composition in this wide open area with infestors to back it up, with Zerglings and Adrenal Glands to back them up, I think that ultralists are going to be very, very awesome in this match. I think that they're going to serve very well. And we even have a Greater Spire coming down for Dong Rangu. Wow, we have every tech path of the Zerg player being produced. Even these Mutalists still being pesky. And here come the Ultralists. Five Ultralists being produced at the same time. We have Chitinous Plating being researched in order to give them that extra armor. And I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Thorzine has to move out now. He has to get going. If he does not move out immediately, if he does not take control of this game right here and now, he's going to be attacked by Ultralis, and I'm not sure if they're going to be able to overwhelm or if he's going to be able to hold. Bottom Marines over here taking out a couple of creep pillars, stopping that creep from um, 
forcing that creep to recede back a little bit more. Zerglings being pesky, and it looks like there are only 13 mutilists less left. I know that sounds like a lot, but for Dong Rangu, he loves him, his mutilists, and here they are coming back in. That is a small flock for him, a small wing of mutilists, and now we have Ultralis about to pop. Nine uh, being built. We've got five, I think, popping now with another four on the way, and here comes the fungal growth on those Marines, and here come the Ultralis. Dun, 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 those giant 